Hey guys, Tony here. Back again. So uh, I wanted to... I was going to wait to do a vinyl, new vinyl finds. So yeah, my first new vinyl finds for 2012. Because I'm expecting a couple things to come in the mail. And I kind of just didn't realize. I mean, it's kind of New Year's Day is being recognized today, Monday. Um, because it was on a Sunday. So there's no mail today. And I kind of expected them to be here today. But I don't want to wait anymore. I definitely have enough to do a new vinyl finds. Um, you know, to be honest, it's like there's so much good. It seems like there's so much going on in the community. Um, I just wanted to be a part of it, really, to be honest with you. And I'm excited about the things I got to show you. Um, so that's why I'm doing it now. Um, yeah, some cool stuff. It's been Yeah, it's been cool in the community. Lots of videos going on. Um, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, Oh, you know, I was going to do something. Hold on. <laughs> One second. Totally forgot about this. Alright, let me start over. Hey guys, Tony here. And, uh, yeah, so this is uh, by request. <laughs> from, uh, from uh, Jeff, glowing double O cabbage. He asked me to, uh, to bring back the shades, you can see I could see myself in my glasses. Oh, to address the glasses, my very very first video. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why. Um, it's kind of like Fred Big Star One Thousand said, like you know, I wanted to make a video, I wanted to be in the video, but yet I didn't want to be in the video. I kind of wanted to just you know. So when Dwayne posted that video the other day, you know, of course I, I you know, thought it was hilarious and. You know, of course, a little embarrassed, you know. So my wife was kind of like in the room. So I was like, yeah, my first video, I wore sunglasses, you know. And she was just like, if you didn't want to be in the video, why did you appear in it? Well, you know, I was like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I guess I just didn't think of it. And I, you know, and I, I've addressed it before. It's like if anybody I know sees this and, you know, it's just going to be me wearing shades. They're obviously going to know that it's me. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me show you what I got. Um, yeah, love the community. It's been great so, so lately. Um, I hope it keeps up. It seems like it's usually all or nothing. Sometimes there's like no videos up uh, for a little while, and then there's just a flood of videos. And you know, so anyway, I'm gonna start off showing you two things I already showed. I figured I might as well just include them in. John Coltrane's Giant Steps, and I did show this and talk about it a little bit, but uh, this is fantastic. Um, probably not as good, in my opinion, as a Love Supreme, but I don't have a ton of John Coltrane. I don't have any of his more avant-garde stuff. Um, I haven't even listened to that stuff very much. I'm kind of afraid. I don't know how, how I'll feel about it, um, but I'll get around to it at some point. But this is fantastic, and as I said too, as I'm sure a lot of you may know, this is John Coltrane's first album where he wrote all the songs. So this is him kind of stretching out a little bit more, I would say, and it's awesome stuff. I mean, there's, it's, you know, I'm not well versed in, you know, great descriptive words for jazz, but to me this sounds very, like, energetic and very all over the place, sort of, you know what I mean. Um, I'm sure there are much better words to describe this, but I love it. It's fantastic. So glad I got it. So just wanted to show that real quick. And this one I showed as well, and I didn't, I hadn't listened to it at that time, but I have listened to it, man. And whew, Panda Bear, um, Person Pitch, and man, this is a cool record. Um, I know a lot of you guys have this, have shown it, talked about it, but I mean, it's very, it's, it's awesome. It's I would call it really psychedelic. It's very there's a lot of experimental elements. Of course, Animal Collective usually, you know, if you know their sound, um, very very Beach Boys ish in a way, but much more obviously crazy and experimental stuff. But um, definitely recommend it if you think you'd like this sort of thing. It's excellent. All right, so now moving on to the new stuff. As usual, you know. I've, I've listened to almost all of these, I've, I think. Um, there's only a few that I listened to more than once, and those are the ones I'll probably talk about more. 
Um, you guys know how it goes. It's just you buy a bunch of stuff, and it's hard to. You want to hear what you bring home usually, and you don't really revisit a lot of stuff right away. Um, a few things I definitely did. A few things here I'm really excited about. So this one I did listen to. It's a live album. Um, Warsaw. And this is called Reaction. Now, for those of you who don't know, Warsaw is Joy Division. Their original name was Warsaw. Um, and I showed that 7-inch and Ideal for Living, that reissue. Um, so what this is, is a live album. And half of it's from a live performance. And half of it is a rehearsal. And this is, I just call this a punk album. I mean so much energy going on and it, the, the, the songs are fantastic um you know it's still joy division in a way because they have that sound you know like the especially the bass of course you know joy division has a huge bass sound and this is awesome so i don't know if it's official or not um rockville production i don't know the record label at rockville that's all it says so uh, yeah very very cool stuff uh, I finally picked up a copy of this. Recommended to me a number of times. Um, I'm probably going to say it wrong, but Jean-Michel Jarre with Oxygen. And definitely electronic. Uh, you know, obviously it's electronic synthesizer based music. And this is awesome. I got to say, um, if you're, this has been shown a number of times. Um, by various members of the community, and this is fantastic, especially if you like electronic, earlier electronic synthesizer music, it's awesome, it's, it's spacey enough, and beautiful enough, it's just, it's a great album, and this is a huge seller, I guess, a uh, big album for him, I guess he's still around, French musician, performer, he's now, uh, I read that he's also now, as known for his huge performances, uh, attended by mil like almost millions of people, I think, um, as his actual music. So, very, very cool. This is a, an import. Beautiful, beautiful shape for six bucks. Now, this one, I know a lot of people are fans of this, this woman. Um, I've never really been exposed to her. I was probably, I probably heard things, maybe, not knowing it was her, or... I don't know, but I've never really exposed to her. I know people, a lot of, of, of big fans of her. I don't know how I feel about this, to be honest with you. Kate Bush. And this is her second album, Lionheart. I picked this up today. And I did only listen to, I listened to one side only. Um, I get the feeling I'm either going to hate this. Right now, I'm not crazy about it. I'm not sure I like it. But I think it's going to be one of those things where maybe once I get used to her vocals, I'm going to love it and love her like what she does or I'm just not gonna like it I don't know I don't know Lo I mean she's obviously hugely respected yeah three bucks um and a lot of people love her I don't know if she's for me though it's those vocals but like a lot of things where the vocals kind of turn me off to begin with it usually just takes getting used to so you know it's like that so Obviously, you know, I'm not going to say this isn't, like, this is terrible. There's no merit to it. I mean, I haven't listened to it enough. I'm just kind of turned off by her vocals, to be honest with you. So, we'll see. I'll let you know. I know, I like, you know, some of you are huge fans of hers and everything. Here's a uh, 2011 album I finally picked up. Washed Out. And I know, again, a number of you have this. Um, I know Mike Bustone and Reggie, I believe, has this. Um... Derek, I believe, yeah, Derek has this, and I know Big Star 1000 has this, and this is awesome. I didn't think I would like it. I think I listened to a soundbite uh, on YouTube a while ago when I first heard about it. I wasn't too crazy about it, but man, it was late at night, and I put this on, and it was just kind of sitting in front of the stereo, just kind of kicking back, and I love this. This is just beautiful, beautiful, very retro sounding stuff. Um doesn't sound dated retro or anything like that it's just it's awesome i love it washed out on sub pop records excellent stuff i saw this um reissue bell and sebastian's first record tiger milk and um 
I think when this first came out, it was a very, very limited release. And it's since been reissued a few times. Uh, this is the Matador Records reissue. And, again, fantastic. Um, I really like, like, yeah, I've, I've explained, like, kind of, like, my feelings on Bell and Sebastian a little bit. Um, I picked up Right About Love. And I wasn't crazy about that record. And then I picked up The Boy with the Arab Strap. I knew they had to, I mean, like, Fred loves them, so... I really felt like I wanted to give them a chance, you know? So I picked up The Boy with the Arab Strap. I picked up... Then I picked up um, If You're Feeling Sinister. And then I picked up this. And uh, am I even saying that title right? If You're Feeling Sinister. <laughs> um, and love that right away. I love The Boy with the Arab Strap. And this is just probably as good as, you know, their second album. And... Um, very glad to get this. Very, very cool stuff. Love the writing. Just fantastic writing. Lyrically, great stuff. Alright, so here I'm going to get into a lot of sort of... A lot of stuff in here is um, jazz fusion. And I've been really getting into this stuff. Uh, it's fantastic. I know it's been shown a lot. It's been talked about a lot lately in the community. And of course, that's obviously has a direct connection as to why I've been checking this stuff out. But man, I'm like in love with it. I really am. And my local record store has has been getting a number of this, these albums in. And they're really cheap. So first I'll start off with Jean-Luc Ponty. And this is the Jean-Luc Ponty experience with the George Duke Trio. I picked this up yesterday so this is one of my first I bought two records yesterday so this is one of my first for Derek one of my first 2012 vinyl purchases and this is fantastic a live album um, recorded in in Hollywood at the experience by saying that, the experience and love that cover art too from 1969 and um, excellent excellent stuff um, George Duke plays keyboards, and obviously Jean Luc Ponty plays. Was playing electric violin. He's a violinist. Jazz, very jazz fusion. Um, you know, has definitely has a rock feel to it. It was said that he was on a bill. Uh, it says in here who he was playing with at this show. Uh, he was playing at a show booked with other rock artists, and they were a little bit worried. Frank Zappa was. Um, among the musicians at this show, I guess. Not on this album, I don't think, but um, he was among the musicians at this particular form performance, and they were worried about how he would go over uh, Jean-Luc Ponty at this show because it, it was an audience of mostly rock fans. And uh, they said he, you know, blew the doors off the place. Everybody loved it. And um, fantastic record. Uh, this is a audition copy. If you can see that, they just stamped it down there. There's nothing else. Uh, it is an original. On, sorry. What is it? World Pacific Jazz. So, very, very cool stuff. Happy to get this for $8. Most of the stuff I'm showing, I bought at local stores, with the exception of maybe two things, one or two things. So, yeah, very cool. And another Jean-Luc Ponty album. Big Star 1000 just showed this. Um, he showed the CD, and it was funny. Just before he showed it, I was at the store with Mike Bostoni and Reggie um, a few weeks ago, and I had this in my hand, and I was going to buy it. At the last minute, I put it down, and then Fred was talking about it, and I'm like, "Shit, I gotta go back and get that." And uh, I didn't think it would be there, to be honest with you, because it was like a week or two later, and I went back, and it was there. Jean-Luc Ponty plays the music of Frank Zappa. This is King Kong. Fantastic stuff. Frank Zappa plays on this. It is a promo copy. Not a white label, but again, an original on World Pacific Jazz. Um, excellent, excellent album. Definitely has that Zappa sort of feel to it. Um, I'm sure if you know it, you know what I mean. Um, he plays, you know, it's Frank Zappa songs. King Kong, Idiot Bastard Son. I don't know if... Well, it's, if, if it's the Mothers of Invention on here as well. 
playing with them. But, uh, yeah, fantastic and beautiful, beautiful shape. For $10, a little bit of ring wear, but what are you going to do? So very, very cool record. All right, so I got some more sort of jazz fusion. Now, this is very much, you know, this is almost like a progressive rock album. Um, I know people have shown, I know people have shown this before. I know, again, Fred, Big Star 1000 showed their, I believe their debut album on ECM, but this is on Polydor. This is Return to Forever, featuring Chick Corea. You know, and it's, again, I believe this was their first album to have a real rock sound to it. And I gotta tell you, if you're a fan of progressive rock, check it out, because it's, it's, it's awesome. Man, it's almost like these guys, yeah, five bucks. It's almost like these guys, like, you know, made this just to, to show those progressive bands how it's done. I mean, you know, fantastic stuff. In beautiful, beautiful shape. Very, very good. Again, it's also funny how all this stuff I'm going to show is, like, related. Um, Jean-Luc Ponty played with Return to Forever. I think only recently they, they reunited and toured, and Jean-Luc Ponty played with them. Um, there's probably more connections than that. But, yeah. Um, Bill Connors, the guitar player on here. <sighs> Fantastic stuff. His, his riffs and on here, <laughs> they're just, it's amazing. So, very, very cool. Alright, so here's probably even more. It'll all tie in at the end, I guess. Derek just showed these. I've been meaning to check out this band. I have checked them out, but never bought anything by them. The Mahavishnu Orchestra. Of course, John McLaughlin. This is their debut, The Inner Mounting Flame. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, you guys know. Fantastic. Uh, four bucks. In beautiful shape, just some ring wear. But the vinyl is really, really beautiful, so very happy to get this. And everything comes in pairs today. The Mahavishu Orchestra. This one has this, God, I'm all backwards. This one has this tear here. It's kind of like a sticker. But the vinyl, again, is in beautiful shape. So, And for $4, I grabbed it. Their second LP, Birds of Fire. This stuff is just amazing. It really is. Oh, so glad to get it. All right, now, this is kind of where everything ties together with this. Fred Big Star 1000 talked about this, and Mike Bostoni and Reggie talked about this. Fred had mentioned this is an album that he really wanted on vinyl, if there was anything he could have on vinyl. And you know what's funny? Miles Davis on the corner. What's funny about this is that I had no idea what this album would really sound like. Uh, I'd seen this cover numerous times, definitely familiar with the cover, but I didn't know what Miles was doing at this point, to be honest with you. Um, so, what happened was, I know Mike showed this and, you know, talked about it a little bit, and um, not too long after that, I saw this at a local record store, and I, I seem to remember that it was marked for $30. And I passed on it, and I bought that Sorcerer LP, which was in my last Finds record, uh, and passed on it. And then um, Big Star 1000 was talking about it, and um, it was, yeah, yeah. And he was talking about it, and I'm like, oh, man. I knew I kind of made a mistake, you know? Um, so I went back. Actually, it was New Year's Eve. Um, I'm sorry, Christmas Eve. Jesus, I'm all backwards. Christmas Eve. I called the record store, and I'm like, do you still have On the Corner? And he's like, yeah, we still got it. I was like, all right, I'm coming down now. <laughs> I went down and got it. And for, for I'm like, $30, whatever. I get there, and he pulled the, the record store owner had pulled it for me. And price tag said $20. So I'm like, did he mark it down? I, 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 I'm not sure. I kind of think he did. So when I went to go, I'm like, all right, I'm definitely going to take it. I handed him the 20 and He's like, oh, just give me 15 so I'm like, awesome, you know? This album is fantastic. Um, universally, it was panned when it came out. People were like, what the hell is Miles Davis doing? Um, I guess from my perspective in 2012 now, this doesn't sound as crazy, as cutting edge as it did then, but it is still a challenging listen. And 
you know, I picked this up and then Derek was talking about it and it was just like, you know, again, I'm so glad I got it. Unbelievable stuff. Again, I'm in love. This is so different from the Jack Johnson LP in so many ways. There's so much stuff going on here. There's like sitar on here. There, so many great players are on this record. Um, it is just a fantastic listen. It really is. So glad to get this again. Ringwear vinyl is beautiful. So very very happy to get this. Uh, just an amazing record. And a couple days ago, same record store. I go back and they had this out. I grabbed it. Miles Davis, big fun. Now what this is is a uh, different songs from different sessions from the, around the same period, kind of put together. So if I'm not mistaken, there might be stuff for Bitches Brew, but uh, that could have been the expanded. I don't know, but there is uh, tracks on here. Maybe not Bitches Brew, but the Jack Johnson sessions. I think definitely the On the Corner sessions and some other ones. But again. Many times, also there's a lot on here that kind of sounds like In a Silent Way. Very quiet, just beautiful stuff. But the track IFE, I -F -E, is definitely taken from the On the Corner sessions. It's like this and On the Corner is like a merging of jazz, funk, avant-garde, rock, um, and Indian music. Eastern influenced music. It's just fantastic stuff. If you see this, grab it. Awesome stuff. So yeah, how it all ties together is that, you know, Chick Corea played with Miles Davis. Um, John McLaughlin, of course, played with Miles Davis. John Luke Ponte played with all of them. It's, it's just very, very cool how in jazz, all these musicians are like, everything's like tied together. All right, moving on. I think, yeah, that's, that's probably the last of the jazz. This is sort of like jazz in a way. Um, I saw this you know, the other day, and I went back for it today. Moondog on Prestige. And this is, I want to say, second release. Very, very minimalist, sort of, also sort of avant-garde. Almost like jazz. Um, excuse me one second. Okay. Um, but just amazing stuff. And I'm so glad I went back and got this. Moondog was... Uh, Basically, a guy who moved to New York with the sole intention of living on the streets. He was also blind. Um, I think he lived on the streets in New York for 20 years. And he dressed in like a, like a Viking outfit. People used to call him the Viking of 6th Street or something. I know Big Star 1000 did an obscure classic on this. Uh, not this album, a different one by him. Awesome stuff. You don't see his stuff very often, but if you do... Grab it. Fantastic. Uh, Kraut Rock Record. One of the men to pick up for a while. Viva by La Dusseldorf. Uh, again, uh, I think members or member of Noi is in this group. Very much along the same lines. A fantastic record. Their second one. And uh, just awesome. Again, if you like Noi, check out La Dusseldorf. Amazing stuff. All right. I know this is probably taking forever. The Cramps, their first album, the songs the Lord taught us. Reissue. So glad to finally get this. Um, again, kind of the founders of what they call it, Psycho Billy. Very much, very influential, very influential on, you know, sort of the goth scene as well. Um, but amazing stuff, really. Early New York punk band, played a CBGB's. Everybody knows the cramps, probably. Awesome stuff. This one is a reissue that I was so glad to see because, believe it or not, this is one I've been looking for for a little while. And he just, I could never find it. Reissued. I saw it in the store. I'm like, I'm buying this. That's it. Um, the microphones. The glow part, too. Awesome album. Very much, very, again... It's on K Records, very minimalist um, stuff, mostly, you know, folky sort of, but not all, you know. I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with this record. It was, like, impossible to get, um, at least when I looked for it, you know. 
been reissued, and it's a three LP set. So there's bonus material on here. Fantastic stuff. Um, again, check it out. The microphones on K Records. I want to say they're they're from like like Seattle, probably at least you know the Northwest states. Fantastic. I'm so glad to get this. Moving on, I finally, this is an album I've been after for a long time. Never had any luck with it, could never find it anywhere. Never saw it in a store until I saw it here. Um, and even online, just one of those things, it's available, you can find it, but Patti Smith, of course, is her debut. Finally got it for 10 bucks. I went to a record store where everything is $10. So a lot of the same common crap is $10. That's why I don't go there very often, but you can find killer stuff sometimes for 10 bucks. So for me, 10 bucks for horses is a steal. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm not the hugest Patti Smith fan in the world. I do like her a lot, um, especially this album. And um, Radio Ethiopia, Easter, like those albums a lot. And I've been after this one for a while, so I'm very happy to finally get it. That's some kind of sticker thing or some kind of, I don't know. But, hey, can't complain. All right, a little progressive rock for you. Coliseum. The grass is greener. And what this is, is, again, same store, 10 bucks. This is basically the American issue of Valentine's Week. Done with a different singer and a couple different songs. But for the most part, the songs are the same. They got a different singer. Only released in the United States. Fantastic stuff. Um, I mean, you try and get Valentine Sweet, forget it. It's originally released on Vertigo Records. This is, you know, again, United States only. It is an original. Just has some ring wear. Uh, I took it home, cleaned it up, and it's beautiful. So happy to get this. I know um, Jonas showed the val Valentine Suite, but yeah, very happy to get Same cover, just with a blue-green hue. It's, if you look it up, it's, it's noted as their second album, but it's really Valentine Suite, but a couple different songs again and a different singer, so very happy to get it. Finally, this is a record that's been on the wall, hung on the wall in the record store. You know, the, those are usually sort of special records. And I've been eyeballing this thing for a long time. And, and the day after Christmas, I went and bought it. So happy to get it. Um, I definitely have to get the first volume of this. But this is the one I really wanted. Greasy Truckers. Jeff the Record Man. I got it. <laughs> I know you talk about these albums and recommended them to me. So this is basically live a, a concert. I believe it was a benefit concert. This is live at Dingwall's dance hall and um, I believe the first volume of this it's harder to find probably um, but yeah Henry Cow, Gong Camel and who else who's the other band sorry Global Village Trucking Company I did not listen to that side yet but each band has a side um, Henry Cow's side is really of course out there very avant-garde Camel set is fantastic Okay, and Gong set is also fantastic. I'm very happy to finally get this. And just near mint shape, really is. <clears throat> just, it looks like barely played. Greasy truckers. <laughs> so happy to get it. So yeah, those are my finds. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting on one thing that like I'm super excited about. Um, but yeah, that'll be in my next video. There you go, guys. Leave me some comments. Sorry if this video is freaking forever. Hopefully it's not too long. Um, take care. Leave me comments. Thanks.